I remember one lady on the, on the course, she asked me, doctor, why did you increase the bite five millimeters? And I asked her, why not? She said, because we can do it only two. I said, why two? Because they, read, they write it in the books. I was, I was like, which books? When I was at the university, they also told me that after increasing two millimeters, the bite, you have to check the intracapsular space on a tomography. Really? Two millimeters? And what, why, why not more? So if your patient needs six, you will tell him, oh, sorry, Mr. Jones, I would do six. But in the book, they write, I can do it only two. So I'll not give you any treatment. Really? So if you're asking me, how much can you increase the bite? I'm asking you, because you very often think about a number. And it's like 2.5. This is called zero point dentistry. We dentists, we really like numbers. We really like precision. But this is not a magic point. This is the comfort zone. So when you make full dentures, what number you got in your head? How much will you increase vertical occlusal dimension when you make full dentures? 2.5? 3.6? How much? Who even think about it? What do you do? You take the upper wax, right? You place it in the mouth. You make the upper lip relaxed. Now you want to have this wax to stick out two millimeters below the upper lip, right? Then you make the occlusal plane according to Camper or Frankfurt or horizontal, whatever your philosophy of occlusion says. And then what do you do? You take the lower wax, you place it in the mouth, and then you may do swallow bite, you may do the dosing manipulation, whatever. But what is important, when you finally close, you do not want your lips to be tensed. You want your lips to be relaxed. Because what is important to, is to have relaxed, relaxed lips. This is the patient who came to my office. She was wearing this uh, splint for two years. Can you believe it? This splint, she looks like a vampire. This is how it all very often ends when you, find, when you finish occlusion course and the only thing you remember is canine guidance. Have a look at this canine guidance. So now I'm asking her, can you close your lips? Can you close? Have a look at this. This is impossible to wear this stuff for such a long time. There is something that is called superior pharyngeal constrictor syndrome. When you have the orbicularis oris muscle, and this muscle is tensed. You also have the vaccinator. You also have superior pharyngeal constrictor muscle. And these all muscles, they pull the jaw backward. This is why my physiotherapist is working on this raffi in here to make it more relaxed. So you are distalizing the jaw because you have problem to close your lips. So once you decrease the bite, your jaw is going forward. This is very destructive treatment when you distalize your jaw because you're pressing the retrodiscal tissues. So do not do that. I remember John Coy saying, as long as your patient looks human, he's fine. And I really love it. Of course, it's like generalizing so much. It's very often totally true. But there are some instances when you really make your patient to feeling, uh, feel very uncomfortable. So this is one, and this is the second one. When you increase vertical occlusal dimension, always have to keep it in mind. You are posterior rotating lower jaw. Once you posterior rotate lower jaw, you are restricting the airways. You are restricting the airways. So in here you see pretty wide airways. In here you see that they are restricted. So if you have a sleep apnea patient, with restricted airways, and now you increase VOD significantly, you restrict it even more. This is why examination and questionnaire for the sleep apnea is so important when you plan to increase vertical occlusal dimension. Because what you may produce is increased bruxism. Can increasing VOD be harmful for TMD. Studies actually do not support this hypothesis because also when you make the spleen therapy you're also increasing vertical occlusal dimension. And this hypothesis came from the assumption that once you increase VOD you are stretching the muscle so muscle want to go back to the primal length so they will intrude the teeth. So once they intrude the teeth you will lose support at the back. Once you lose support at the back, you will overload your joints. 
There is no confirmation for this hypothesis. But you have to ask yourself a question, do we even have a relapses, as they said in here? Do we have relapses after increasing vertical occlusal dimension? So again, this assumption came from the idea that uh, the, the, muscle, the muscle spindle, I missed the word, the muscle spindle is not adapting but is giving the response to your body to contract again. And it turned out that the adaptability of muscle spindle is very, very high. What also turned out, it, uh, there were some traumatic studies on rabbits and on the cats. So they were stretching muscles significantly and they checked what happened. And in this study, it was a study from the Stanford University in cooperation with Apple company. So they did a mathematical model. And it turns out that when you increase the length of the muscle, what happens is the sarcomerogenesis. So the number of sarcomeres is increasing. This is adaptation. This is adaptation. It's a huge weapon of animals and a huge weapon of of, of humanity, but you also, what you always have to remember is that adaptation always has a cost. So keep it in mind. I'm sorry, I do have a problem. Okay. And what the study also says is that when you do it in one stage, when you stretch the muscle in one stage, it will put much more stress on your muscle uh, rather than if you do it gradually. So there, there could be an assumption that when you increase VOD, you should also be doing it in stages. I've never ever done that in stages in my life. And I did hundreds of this form of reconstruction with increasing VOD. Never ever did it in stages. Because the question you also have to ask yourself is, do we really stretch the muscles when we increase vertical occlusal dimension? Do we really stretch it? We can stretch it when we do it like they did it on orthognatic surgery and on animal experiments because this is where it came from. The studies on monkeys, on, on rhesus. So what they did, they put the 7 millimeter splint, 7 millimeter high splint for this little head. It is huge when you look at this picture. So it's not surprising that it caused stretching of the muscle and intrusion of the teeth. So when you increase that much, that you will not only increase the height, the frontal height of your face, but also the posterior height of your face, then maybe you will increase the length of the muscles. The same is what happens when you do the orthognatic surgery. Look, in here, when you use a rotational axis, then you increase in here, let's say one, and here three. So this part of your face is getting much longer than the posterior part of the face. But if you do orthognatic surgery, the posterior part of the face and the anterior part of the face, they're both getting longer. So the, the likelihood that you will increase the length and you will stretch the muscles is much higher. These are the nice pictures from John Coyce. And this is why in orthognatic surgery you are more likely to have uh, relapses. But also something like this may happen. So when your patient is wearing down the teeth and uh, the, the height of the face remains the same. This is called dental alveolar compensation. So it means that the teeth are wearing down but there is a, uh, the, the bone is growing. And with these cases, when you increase VOD now, very often the face looks like a horse. It's going to be too long. So what can we do? You have to decide. Because very often in here, you have to do the crown lengthening. But how can we decide whether we're going to do the crown lengthening or increasing VOD? Easy. Take a picture at rest. So when you take a picture at rest, and let's say that this is a picture at rest, and now, these teeth sticks out two millimeter below the upper lip at rest. You know that you do not want to make them even longer. 
now because you don't want a patient to look like a rabbit. So now I want to make them longer up, not down. On the other hand, if your patient is has a rest position, oh, I'm not because I know. Sorry for that. It looks like a whale, right, with the eye in here. So when your patient, when your patient has this type of uh, rest position, I want to have this exposure of the upper teeth at rest two millimeters. So then I know that I will make it longer down, like with the Monday morning patient. So you have to take also the, the, the length of the face into consideration because with the short face, she's more likely to look, to look better after increasing VOD rather than this patient, right? What else? It, when you increase VOD, there is also posterior rotation of the mandible and posterior rotation of the chin. So if your chin looks like with Quentin Tarantino, maybe you're going to look better. If you got a straight profile, maybe you will not look worse. But if you have this type of profile, you are very likely to look worse. And you know, we, the men, we got some other solutions to fix this problem. And women do not have it. But we also have to remember is that when, you, 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 when your chin is retreated, very often it's not only the chin and the face, it's your bite. So we got increased over jet. And once you got increased over jet, like you see in here, once you increase VOD, where is the lower central going to? Even more to the back. And what are you going to do now? So what are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to make this palatal side that thick? Or maybe you're going to do the lower incisor that long? Or maybe you just meet something somewhere in the middle, like this? Or maybe you decide, let's leave the open bite. No matter what you're going to choose, is compromised treatment. This is why these patients very often they, they end up with orthognotic surgery. And this is why this is so tough. Uh, John Coy said, just because something is reproducible doesn't mean it is not alterable. And it is so true. Because for years we thought that we cannot alter the rest position. Because once we do that, the patient will be banging on the teeth while speaking. But when you look at this study, it is the people who are wearing full dentures full dentures for seven years wearing it down so what happened not only the not only the rest phase has changed the length but also the morphologic phase length has changed but have a look the rest the freeway space was following these changes. It was always the same for these people. So if you're going down with VOD, it will follow the VOD. If you're going up with VOD, it will follow the VOD. Of course, with some limits. If you have problem to close your lips, it, it is not good, right? So the, the rest position is reproducible. What they say is muscle tonus adapts to extreme changes in vertical dimension. What they say is the jaw muscle motor behavior is more dynamic and adaptable to environmental changes than has ever been believed. That has ever been believed. And when you look at this study, this is a very nice study. This is the systematic review. And what they talk about is that even if you uh, go if you increase VOD beyond the freeway space, patient will adapt. And we are not speaking about some constant location, but a comfort zone. What also we say that increasing VOD up to 5 mm is predictable and safe procedure. Of course, if you do it wrong, even 1 mm will be wrong. So what it also says that there are some associated signs and symptoms where they were self-limiting within two weeks. So why is it like for majority of people, if you increase VOD, they will feel better. Some people, they will feel worse, but after two weeks, they will adapt. But some people, they will feel all the time much worse. This is because, I don't know if you know, that if we are incre increasing VOD, it's not only the jaw that is posterior rotating, but there is also the posterior rotation of the skull. So it, it works like a scissors and it is even 0 0.3 up to 9 degrees within the first hour what they say. But in study which, where it comes from, it is uh, Dali and it's, uh, they, they increase about 8 millimeters. 
This is significant, 8 millimeters, and I think this is pretty subjective because what they check is the natural head posture. What is natural head posture? This is subjective. How can you compare it between patient and even between one patient with, within one minute? It may be different because you may stand like this naturally, you may stand like this naturally. So, of course, it is important, and, but it's hard to measure. This is what I'm saying because when you look, this is my case, when you look at this, when we increase VOD for this patient and what you see is that the space in here is decreasing but if the space is big it's not a problem when the space is small and this patient already has a pain with, uh, with pain referred to the face you may make it even worse so this is why when we especially and when you have a patient with orofacial pain and you have a patient that looks like this and you do want to increase VOD, make it cephalometric picture with the natural head posture. And then what we check is craniovertebral angle and the spaces, functional spaces between the cervical vertebrae. Because once you decrease these spaces, uh, there is irritation of trigeminal cervical nucleus. And it may give you the irritation on the, on the face. <laughs> <laughs>